the Humanist Podcast. Welcome, all you ghouls and ghosts, creatures of the underworld, to the Humanist Podcast, Spooktober edition. With me, I have the wretched corpse of Steph. Emissary of the star spawn himself. Oh yeah, so you kind of elevated yourself from from wretched <laughs> wretched corpse to emissary of the star spawn. I think they go hand in hand. I don't think they judge or differentiate. No. <laughs> but today is uh, a special Spooktober edition. Uh, we're gonna do like uh, a small variant of uh, the usual podcast with a spooky story at uh, the ending of each episode. So stay tuned for that. Yes. We've got to bring the creepy mm. crawlies. It is the month for it after all. Oh yeah. I'm I'm getting the good feels. <laughs> you know, blanket, coffee, just sitting inside, playing some good games. Okay. So our first topic for today is going to be the the hands-on videos with the new consoles. Yeah, a little bit of console hype there. Oh yeah. So, so uh, which ones did you watch so far? Um, I did watch a, a compilation or a kind of breakdown of the uh, PS5 ones that mm. we got from Japan. Right. Uh, where YouTubers were allowed to get like some hands-on time with some restrictions uh, yeah. uh, with, the, with the console. Um, and I don't know. It looked... Uh, I thought it looked great. I, I was actually kind of positively... <laughs> Uh, surprised by the size of the PS5 because <laughs> yeah. I I thought it was going to be like ridiculously huge and kind of almost to the point of obscenity, like not being aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Um, but it was actually it was actually kind of all right. So that was kinda, that was actually the the one thing that I really was impressed by. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I, I mean, I. Yeah, I think uh, for this one, it looked it looked like it could realistically fit in um, a living room of a normal yeah. human, human being that's uh, above the age of thirteen. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but that's yeah, that's my exact point. The, the the first impression was that this is just not gonna fit anywhere. You know, it's gonna be this <laughs> ugly thing just standing. You know, at this maybe maybe at the side of the the TV or something in girlfriends are going to rip out their hair <laughs> looking at it you know <laughs> but uh yeah it did it didn't look too bad actually so yeah and uh, one thing it has going for it compared to the xbox is that i think it's more aesthetically pleasing as well so mm. you know that makes it a little bit look a little bit less foreign in like let's say uh what do you call that like um you know those uh what do you call that home entertainment setups, you know, like with the mm. giant speakers and everything. Uh, I yeah. think this one would fit in well in one of those. Yeah, because it has that slim profile. I, I guess that that's, I think, I don't, I'm, I don't think that the Xbox is, you know, bad looking by any means. I think actually that I like the simplistic kind of build of it, the, yeah. the, the, the fridge style. Uh, but hey, uh, catch us in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I think that it will be a little bit hard to put because the reason why consoles are flat is because you know that's that's an easy <laughs> design to put away and hide, you know, and just <laughs> tuck under the TV. But um, Rest I don't know, PS3 owner, something original. Yeah, true, true that. But uh, yeah, the this. Right. The size of the PS5 just seemed to be, you know, acceptable. And yeah. I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be like a fucking huge dildo standing out, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and you get all the wrong questions. And you have to explain and it doesn't come across because obviously it just sounds like you're desperately trying to explain your way away and excuse mm. your um, <laughs> deviant <Yeah>. behavior. <laughs> With the lights and all. Yeah, like you bought you know. <laughs> a dildo that can play games just to make excuses? Yes, exactly. How did you know? Mm -hmm. And it's very tall, and it's also like quite deep. So my, you know, my anus, anus is kind of shaped like I don't know, a fucking keyhole or something. What the fuck? 
Oh no. So yeah, that's um that's today's intimate information. Uh, <sighs> but what about the, the... <laughs> keyhole? Okay, so um what about the Xbox Series X hands-on? Did you see any cuz I I only saw the the kind of announcement that some content creators got uh, an example of the Xbox Series X. Yeah. Just, but they were still under embargo. Yeah. And you saw some exclusive <laughs> footage or recently dropped footage. Yeah, it was today. very recent. It was like um, maybe a few hours before we started recording that it was dropped. Yeah. And, um, you know, the thing is, I don't know if the embargo is actually lifted or if these people just like decided, fuck it, let's <laughs> just get yeah, it out there. People I, actually do that, you know? If, yeah. Especially if they're like not too popular and they just <laughs> they just give up like, <laughs> like yeah. any future rights to anything. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I saw so I saw that they um, they they basically showed they didn't show the actual console, but what they did was that they they showcased like um, some impressions of games for the Xbox One and 360 running on the yeah. series x and especially some of the more heavier titles to kind of compare them um how, how it fares because you know it, it is supposed to be that the old games run at an enhanced performance uh with the series x and mm. they really show that because like uh for example they showed tomb raider and they show, mm -hmm. uh, showed um red Dead redemption 2 and assassin's creed odyssey uh and even banjo kazooie you know mm. Uh, a lot of different things. So yeah. just to kind of show a little bit of everything. And the thing is, like, um, for example, for, for Monster Hunter World, they like you have options to prioritize resolution versus uh, frame rates, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like and performance mode. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing is, what they said was that the when they played Monster Hunter World on the resolution, prioritized resolution mode, they said that the, the frame rate was so stable uh, and they showed it too at like, um, I guess, as close to 4K as that um, previous gen version can go. And it never switched, it never dropped in frame rates. It was like a solid, oh. smooth 60 FPS with the maximum resolution at all times. So it essentially made the performance mode obsolete. Um, Whoa. And that's, that's impressive. Yeah, exactly. And uh, for Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well, it was the same thing. Um, you know, it didn't scale down any resolution automatically. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 was the same thing. It ran at 4K with like, uh, I, I don't know if that game is like locked to 30, but you know, it, it didn't dip at all. And that one also is supposed yeah. to have like the dynamic resolution scaling. Um, yeah. Uh, and But then apparently it didn't scale down at all, no matter what was happening on screen. So Yeah, right. So it just kept it on max yeah and it looked fucking beautiful man like um and even though it's a it's still not a next gen title so no no but i mean that that's that game is so kind of unique anyway so i feel that and and xbox is getting a if that's true that the the, the performance enhancing mode is so good yeah then i mean this is going to be the definitive way to play all those old classics you know yeah and um yeah, that's that's a huge kind of point for Xbox right there. I think. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I'm gonna drop some controversial news as well. I actually pre-ordered the Xbox over the PS5. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. You did? Yeah. The Series uh, X. Yeah, I mean. Yes, the monolith. The monolith. The uh, you you sided with the Necrons. You fucking bastard. Hey, I don't no, take but... sides. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Well, wow. That's a left side one. But what? Well, explain your reasoning, Monsieur. Uh, well, this was right before they actually announced the uh, acquisition of acquisition of uh, Bethesda and everything as well. So mm -hmm. the thing was that I saw there was a lot of trouble. First of all, with the pre-ordering of the PS5 with the inventory yeah. and uh, the pre-ordering, giving out false information during the showcase of when, and like some retailers just like selling it out of nowhere before the time. And there was a lot of uh, controversy. I'm sure you've all heard about that. And yeah, sure. And that was one thing. And then our mutual friend, Dank N, he actually noted, he made me aware that, yeah, uh, one of our biggest retailers, L-Shop, 
uh, was actually going to have some stock for like in store uh, mm -hmm. for release. But what I'm thinking then is, all right, how about I don't go there and line up with all the potential Rona <laughs> people no. um, and maybe not even get it. And I might work that day, all these things. How about, and I noticed this was the night before that the Xbox Series X pre-orders were live. So I was like, all right, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to wake up at just before nine, pre-order it, go back to sleep. And I did. And one of the other things that the Xbox have that is very good for me, uh, this was like um, not the biggest reason. The biggest reason is actually because of the Game Pass. Um, yeah. be because I'm a prospective student, right? I'm, I'm still applying for grad school. And <laughs> while I'm doing grad school, I can't afford paying out $70 for games all the time. And Game Pass, with the amount of titles they'll have available, uh, both now and in the yeah. future, it's like, man, that's a way better option for me. Yeah. So you kind of imagine that you're just going to, you know, crash uh, every other night and you want a new title to test out and it's going to be, you know, in a, a constant stream of entertainment yeah. for a reasonable price. Yes. And uh, it will make me more able to keep up with impressions for the podcast and stuff, too, because I don't have mm. to fork out like full price for for a lot of the games. So, no. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I mean, I was actually leaning towards the Xbox as well. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If if I'm gonna buy one of these machines, it's gonna be the Xbox. Oh really? Uh, and that's because I think that it'll have the games will come. Mm. Yeah. Even though the lineup is weak right now, uh, it will kind of you know have a um, second wave. Yeah, I believe, and I think that the uh, like you said, the kind of Microsoft's handling of things, they seem very serious uh, yeah. about the product this time. They they seem they want to kind of conquer the space, uh, and they seem very willing, you know, acquiring all these studios, just forking out the money, you know. Yeah, um, and I also really like the design and uh, feel of the uh, controller, which is basically yeah. the same as the last generation's controller. I agree. I also um, always prefer that one. So I I was leaning towards that, even though it's a little bit more, I don't know, the, the lineup is not that good. But I also, the thing is, uh, we didn't talk too much about that, but since the, uh, it's going to be... Since the newer games for the Xbox Series X aren't developed for the hardware, yeah, you know they're just kind of upscaled, not upscaled, but they're the um, core kind of engine uh, utilities are developed for last generation's hardware. The yeah. games that they showed us, so I think that even though they look underwhelming now, there's gonna be some titles in the near future, maybe in a year or so that are going to just blow your mind. That's what uh, I hope as well. And uh, yeah. some of the exclusives they showed, like, for example, what was it? Call of the Sea, was it? For me yeah, as a Lovecraft yeah. horror fan, like, I, I was hooked by that game. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'll am i be honest. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer to miss out on Demon Soul and um, mm -hmm. Moss Morales. But, you know, at the same time, I don't mind listening to you guys talk about your experiences with it and just like watching Dan Ken play it at his place, you know, these things. Uh, no. At least for Demon's Souls. Yeah, yeah and Demon's Souls is going to come to a PC, so I'm not going to miss out on that, you know. So that's yeah. my kind of reasoning here. And also Game Pass is, you know, a value for, for a PC gamer. It really is. So that's kind of gotten me leaning towards the Xbox, but I'm not really sure if I'm, if I'm going to pull the trigger on one of the consoles because... You know, maybe I should just upgrade my PC, you know. I love <laughs> PC gaming. So. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to be, if I want a new graphics card, maybe the 3080 or something, that's yeah. going to be the price of you know, the entire fucking machine. So. And more. And more. And more. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I agree. And that would be nice, though, because that would mean we, we would have one representative for each base. So we would have Xbox for me, PC for you, and then PS5 mm -hmm. for N. So I think that would be yeah. a nice balance. And uh, there's a lot of cross-play opportunities as well. Um, so 
I, yeah, I don't really I mean, see the, the market for crossplay is, is kind of increasing steadily. I feel, yeah, and especially with the new generation, I think the crossplay will be easier, you know, to to implement for for developers. That's true, um, and you know, the um, recently I played uh, No Man's Sky with a friend, um, yeah. and uh, basically he played on steam and i played through game pass but yeah on that one the, the cross play is just seamless um yeah and we had right. a lot of fun with that it, like no no hiccups well there's the typical no man's sky uh yeah, version but of I, disconnecting but that that was i don't think that was related to cross play but i kind of saw in passing that no man's sky is, is getting yet another big kind of content update is that true or do you mean do after you there was one that came out fairly recently uh, a couple yeah, of weeks ago yeah yeah, a couple uh, of weeks. Okay, so that's probably it. Yeah, and uh, I'm loving the game now. It's so fun. Okay. Like the, the the amount of content they have now. Uh, for me, you haven't played it since launch. No. Um, I thought it was okay back then as well, but then I I never got onto the hype before the game released. No. So, yeah. But now, I mean, Dan was so fucking hyped for that game. I was yeah. kind of hyped too, and I I was very let down. But I think that that's just due to me being very peculiar about uh interface and stuff like that i True. hate it when i think that the interface is just you know working against you but are there any innovations to the interface do you know that um i will say that the game takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of like how to you know uh, there are some functions still that are a little bit like finicky yeah uh, and there's a lot of inventory management which gets yeah. better eventually as you you know you get more get an expanded storage inventory, yeah yeah and it yeah because the, no because uh the last time everybody was like oh my god no man's sky is good now you know uh i downloaded it and i tried it i gave it like a couple of more hours and i just couldn't you know i just <laughs> <laughs> but i feel i feel that that's maybe me and my impatience towards stuff like that because i do love like that type of grindy you know collecting crafting slow progression yeah. type of game but then and i fucking love the the premise of you know flying around in space infinitely randomly generated planets yeah uh but it's like i don't know the something about the system just in i just didn't like it i don't know if the current iteration is gonna buy you over but it did for me uh and especially yeah. now that i'm playing with a friend as well he already had like all these mining things set up and he had like a bunch he was loaded with cash and all that stuff so he could easily guide me through stuff so i, yeah. I guess i could skip a lot of the initial grind where you essentially okay, yeah. just run around trying to get essentials and right and that, i guess so that helped too. You. yeah he, yeah, he got I mean, me to the exploration helped. phase pretty fast and that's the exploration phase is what i love the most about the game so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I think that I don't know. I just I was just hoping that they were going to do something radical to the system, but I guess that that's too much to hope for. So I well, uh, some of the most fun stuff about the game right now that I feel uh, one mm -hmm. is all the um, fucked up stuff you can meet in space now. So for example, oh. you can explore derelict freighters. So yeah. I don't know if you played when freighters well, after freighters were were introduced. No, no, no. I I did play after, but I never. I never, I just, you know, played for maybe half an hour. Okay, because the freighters um, are pretty badass because, like, they are gigantic, you know, fucking transport ships that also works as yeah. your flying base. And you can send out expeditions. You can recruit new ships into your fleet to send out. And you can also, like, you can just, uh, you know, that fantasy you have, like, that awe you get when you see Star Destroyers just, like, pop in from hyperspace above the planet and, like, that huge yeah. looming stuff. You can do that yeah. whenever you want to now with your own ship. With, and there are with some your really own cool looking ones. Yeah. Okay, that sounds really badass, though. Yeah, that, that never gets old. Um, and you mm. park all your ships in there and you can build teleportation devices aboard it. So you can just, um, you can teleport all your gear and your exocraft and shit, like, back and forth. Um, so there's a lot of things Down to now. The planet. Yeah. Down to the planet. Yeah, okay. So you can port your exosuit mech and stuff like down to the planet. And it's just like, there's a lot of cool shit you can do. And the derelict freighters is my uh, cosmic horror fantasy because like you essentially just pick up coordinates to 
uh, freighter that something fucked up happened to the crew. They sent out a distress signal. You yeah. go there and you enter, and you know everything is just like filled with these like biological goop, living things that cover stuff, and you know rogue AI systems and a lot of fucked up it's stuff. Like a space Hulk, basically. Yeah. Or space Hulk, space dead space. Hulk. Yeah, a little bit dead space kind of as well. So you just go in yeah, there and you loot. Space horror. You find out all that happened to the crew, and you kind of loot the stuff there, and you earn a lot of money from it, and it's a lot of fun. And you know, there's a lot of right. these things. That I like about it. So for yeah. now, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. It does sound fun. That with the way you're presenting it now, really, maybe I should try it once more. But I think that I'm just gonna give up. You know, after two hours, once more. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm afraid. You, just get on I'll with uh, with me, and I can we can just like try and skip through some or like streamline a little bit the uh, the initial grind, and then you can probably see how it goes. Yeah, because you you own your own freighter. But did you do you uh, when you're playing with your buddy? Are you kind of zooming around with uh, two freighters, or you can how does that work? You can, okay. or or you can just be aboard each other's and just warp that, and you just um, you have your ship parked in his freighter, or vice versa. Yeah. All right. What was the guy, the developer's guy's name? Doug Murray or something? Uh, Sean Murray, I think. Sean Sean Murray was it? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that guy. I think that he's made his he made his life mission to kind of rectify <laughs> all the hate that he got for yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, but to be guy. fair, I think, <laughs> you know, eventually no man's sky became a pretty good redemption story because now yeah, but, yeah, they have right. all of the, they have pretty much at least I don't remember all the lies he told, but I, I know that most of them have been implemented now. So the game, yeah, is a and much I think more that, uh, thing. yeah, I think that that is like, a really good thing, but I mean, much of the hate that he got was a little bit underserved because he was kind of under pressure, you know, to oversell the game. Yeah, because there was so much money invested and in marketing. Yeah, I think I think that hit him hard, but he he's done a good job. So you know, pat on the huge pat on the back for him. Um, yeah, and his team. Uh, he he's not Todd Howard from Bethesda, who just like sixteen times the detail. Um, no. <laughs> it's not like it wasn't like that so no anyway uh, going back to i guess the uh the <laughs> console hands on yeah uh there was this one more thing i saw about ps5 where um i looked up the famitsu youtube channel and uh, yeah. i looked up because they have some videos on there with like some they did a little bit of testing at the event and um, one mm -hmm. of the things they showed was the load times that the SSD brings. So they mm -hmm. tested that on, uh, what was it, Astro Boy, the, the platforming yeah. thing, and then also on Godfall. Mm -hmm. uh, so they essentially did loading into levels, but they also did uh, loading back to checkpoints when you die. Yeah. They showcased some of that. And with Astro Boy, it was like instantaneous. Uh, and then with, uh, with Godfall, it was like, um, the first time you die, it loads a little mm. bit longer, and then after that, it loads shorter. Um, but it was still yeah. a matter of like few seconds. It was uh, it yeah, was pretty right. good looking. It, it didn't take long at all. You were just like thrown straight back into the action. And even yeah. though I'm not really excited for Godfall, the seeing all the the effects and the you know all the moving parts with the, with the nice graphics and everything moving like without frame rate drops, it still it performance wise it looked pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I think that the uh, SSD thing, it was, I mean, I, on PC, I mean, I have like the SSD that it's coupled right onto the motherboard, yeah. the N2 SSD. And <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's fucking, you know, really, really nice to have. Yeah. Uh, but the, the thing is with the consoles that the technology just had to come to a point where it, it was cheap enough to kind of have it on the consoles. Yeah. I think that that's going to because loading times and, and now that everything's digital basically anyway, I think that that's just going to make console gaming just so much more appealing. Oh yeah. Because that was like one of the few things that were you know, kind of lame with console gaming that you had to this huge amounts of data um and loading times and stuff like that with the discs it was just not really good yeah true 
you know the i think that the, the difference between an hdd uh, and the uh, no or an, a disk a regular h uh, disk drive and a ssd is like insane uh in terms of write uh, read speed right uh, i think it's like is it 10 times can it be that much faster i think it's like something like that yeah the m2 ssd is much more it's a lot faster mm -hmm. but i don't know what kind of ssd that's implemented on the new consoles though i think that that might be the same type yeah same i'm not sure um to be honest but i know that from what I could see from the actual performance, it looked um, it looked pretty good. Yeah, and it says, so... for example, in an article by Kotaku, it says that um, for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it took sixty seven seconds to load on the Xbox One X, uh, but it loaded on the Series X in thirty seconds. Yeah. Um, and then Outer Worlds took six seconds on Series X compared to twenty seven seconds on the Xbox One. So the there is some significant difference, and you could really tell from the uh, whenever they got booted or like killed or something. You know, you could really tell yeah. that it, this was um, it was fast. So I'm I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far, both on the PS5 and the Xbox, to be honest. And um, the only yeah. thing I'm a little bit like bummed about, I guess, I don't know how significant this is gonna be, but the storage, you know, like how it's one terabyte, but. The, the additional storage you can buy is so fucking expensive. It's like mm. two hundred dollars yeah, per terabyte, like two twenty for the Xbox Series. Um, and I'm yeah. just like, I don't want to buy that. that is expensive. Yeah, but it's, uh, I mean, it's not that different from a. Or I think that uh, in Norwegian Kroner, it's like a thousand, a little bit over a thousand for a one terabyte Samsung SSD, external SSD. Yeah, but the, I don't think they work with. Um, no, no, but uh, they don't work with. But uh, I think that you know the price is quite, you know, similar. Yeah, it's not that hard. I think that to they probably need to do some modification, you know, from for for it to interface with the Xbox and PlayStation. Or, yeah, yeah. I, and, I think, uh, I'm just worried that, about that. The you know, do I have to buy these? Or is it enough with the storage that is already in the console? Because I don't, I don't really want to fork out another two hundred twenty dollars for another um, expansion card. So I hope no. it's not necessary. But probably the expansion cards are going to go down in price over time. Don't you think? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're just going to keep, you know, the, the, a set price on them because it's, you know, prepare, proprietary add-on. Could be, uh, but that's. I guess that's one of the few things that worry me. But if it says like. Um, for example, it says that uh, Demon Souls is probably going to be around 50, 60 gigs, in which case, yeah, then you can fit quite a few of them um, on the approximately 800 gigabytes um, that you have available. But yeah. um, if you have other games, like, for example, Warzone, which is, what, yeah. 150 gigs now, um, you know, that, that stuff will pile up quickly. So. Yeah. But I think that I know you're going to do the Game Pass. You're not going to have like all the games that you own installed yeah. at all times. So it's probably just going to be like, okay, now we'll play this for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's gone. <laughs> just download a new one and uh, yeah, don't get too attached to your titles. Because I'm like you, I, I like to have them, you know, on the hard drive, just download yeah. it. In case, but mm. I never play them. You know, I just you, I always play like five, maybe five games at a time, and not more. Yeah, I guess like it, ultimately, it, it's a, it's a small complaint. Um, at, at least for the first wave of games. Before, um, I'm sure future games that will be made for the next gen consoles natively. I'm sure some of them will more. start to. I, I don't think it's going to be long until we see 200 gigs uh, as a common. No. no, I don't think so either. It's and then just, suddenly you can have four time. games or three, maybe add, uh, maybe less than that too, if you need like updates and stuff. So yeah. it's a it's a long term worry, I guess, but not like a big one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it'll be okay. Some type of solution will kind of present itself before before that time. I think. Yeah. Even maybe 
maybe they're going to go down in price. Maybe you're just going to, you know, not have too many games install at once. Yeah, true. Maybe it'll hack your Xbox kind of like I did uh, the on the original Xbox. I had like a chip, <laughs> yeah, and a pirate chip installed on it with a custom uh, OS and stuff. And yeah. uh, I remember I expanded the hard drive on that one, which was like I don't know eight gigs or something. Ooh, like in the... <laughs> no, no, the original was eight gigs, I believe, and I got like a 20, 20 gig. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that was, that's where you stored like all of those like old SNES games the, and the, the hentai porn. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> the, 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 the SNES games were the, that was like five hundred megabytes or something, you know, with the emulator <laughs> and all the games. <laughs> yeah, the rest were just like, all right, f- 19 and a half Tentacle gigs. porn it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sex and vertebrae. Uh, but in all seriousness, I actually like on that rip, the SNES batch that I got, yeah. there were like some some se- some sex hentai games oh, no. that were just like slideshows. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I remember like, what the fuck? Just coming over them. What? What is this? And a lot of them didn't work, but they were basically just images, uh, just pixel art. So yeah, yeah. Good times, huh? The good old, good, uh, good old springtime of youth, as the Japanese call it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Station games. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, but I think the the um, the low times will be, you know, a really kind of good upgrade from the previous generation. Maybe one of the largest upgrades. Even yeah, it's been coming for a long time. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to the next generation, and uh, it's the first time I've actually ordered like a console on launch as well. So I'm kind of excited. I know there's yeah. gonna be, I know it's always risky, but at the same time, it's just like, well, this is one of the few points in my life where I am able to do so. So I figured, hey, let's try it. And of the launch games, yeah, I, mean, I noticed that Yakuza Seven or um, Yakuza Like a Dragon is one of the um, launch titles, and um, yeah. Personally, as uh, someone who loves the Yakuza series, I'm definitely going to talk about that on another episode because that that is like such a fucking gem of a franchise. And um, the new one is getting all sorts of praises. It's going to be the yeah. first one in the series that is actually going to use turn-based combat instead of uh, beat-em-up style. Uh, and I see that Ooh. the tactical RPG combat is getting a lot of praises. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, And it's a new protagonist yeah, as well. So it's a good entry point for potential newcomers to the series, even though I recommend Yakuza 0 as a really, really great way to get into the series. Yeah. Uh, it looks like this one is going to be another potential entry point for, for a new, um, how to say, for people that are new to the series. So I'm, I'm hyped. Super hyped. You're getting me hyped as well. <laughs> I mean, dude, the, the, that I, I cannot sing the praises high enough for those games. I'm playing um, Yakuza Kiwami 2 on Game Pass right now. Like all the three uh, remakes or like the um, newer titles are on the Game Pass. So you have yeah. like Yakuza Zero, and then you have Kiwami, which is like a remake of the first one that came out uh-huh. for PS2, and then you have Kiwami 2, which is obviously a remake of the second game. Uh, but the Kiwami 2 is using the most recent engine where you have like ragdoll physics and stuff for the fighting. And it's a lot of okay. fun. I, I'm, I'm yeah. having a blast playing that game. So, it does yeah. sound interesting. It does sound interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. The, yeah, the proposition of Xbox just appeals more and more to me. Yeah. It really does. And like the money thing is not really a problem. Oh, look at you, Mr. Uh, Big Baller. <laughs> 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 or I mean, I should say I can I can you know prioritize that in my economy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it makes sense. It's possible for me to to shoulder that expense. Yeah, it's a better way sense. to say it. It's not like I just don't give a fuck about shelling out you know, <laughs> hundreds of dollars. I know, but it, I know. I uh, it's like if I want if I want the console, I can buy it, and yeah. if I want that fucking graphics card i can buy that too but i don't think i'll get both yeah i mean that makes sense um so so, so yeah extravagant this uh 
yeah, but at least, you know, whichever you pick, we're going to have a sort of diverse, um, how to say, diverse cast of representation here uh, in terms yeah. of the consoles. And to be fair, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't think any of us are really biased that much towards like, I'm only playing this. I'm never going to play that. Fuck that. It's like, it's no. never like that for any of us. You know, we just love games. So all consoles no, no, of course have not. their gems. <laughs> That's just a meme, you know? Yeah. The, I mean, competition is good for us, the, the consumer. Yeah. We, we should encourage competition. But I guess that's what we're doing with having like a mock war between gamers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's man. just because we're passionate. So, yeah. Um, I, I've been switching sides like a prostitute, you know, because like for my first actual proper home console, um, I, I grew up with PC and Game Boy Color, right? From when I was mm -hmm. about six, and then I got the GameCube, and then I got Xbox 360, and then I got PS4, and now I'm going for Xbox Series X, and I have the Switch. So, so it's a little bit like you're just yeah, you're playing for all the teams. I am. It's the way of the world now, you know. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you chose the right path. And I have a gaming laptop as well, so you know, I, I think I got most bases co covered. Pretty much. Yeah, that's really good. You know, to be able to enjoy the PC specific shit because there are a lot of indie games, you know, that are only for PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Factorio. Factorio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought Factorio, so I have that in my library now. Did you try it though? Not yet. I, I'm waiting for kind of um, your expertise or like tutorial session. So, um... yeah, sure. Um, we have to do that soon, though. Yeah. I mean, you can't wait with Factorio. It's just too good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> I think for those cases, uh, you know, like the indie games, there's so many pretty good, uh, like good ones in PC as well. So, I mean, you owe it to yourself. A lot of them, the good thing about indie games, a lot of them don't have very heavy requirements. A lot of them are even 2D. So it's easy for yeah. uh, no matter what kind of PC you have to kind of just get on that. So Yeah, that's typical, you know, <laughs> me. Buying a like 3080 <laughs> graphics card and, and running Factorio <laughs> on it. That's or, the, or yeah, you know. or 8 bit yeah. heroes too. 8 bit heroes too. Shout out to 8 bit heroes. Yeah, shout out to them. Uh, in like one zillion frames per second, <laughs> <laughs> if the engine even allows that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, you need to have those graphics. That's like that's big dick energy, boys Absolutely. and gals. <laughs> that's, that's big pussy energy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> okay, so back to being a little bit serious. Um, <laughs> we're um, <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just I'm I'm just gonna have a small sip of coffee here. Just <laughs> hold on. Just hold on. <sighs> okay. Can't yeah, um, but um, I'm looking forward to a little, to hearing about Xbox Series X games if I don't get it myself. Yeah, stay tuned. Um, yeah, and now we are going to go over into the spooky segment. Yes. And today it's going to be me telling the story uh, of um, when my little ass was scared shitless uh, in... Zelda. So just imagine this this uh, little kid sitting at home playing Nintendo 64 in a dark basement because I actually lived in the basement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, my room was in the basement of the house. So um, and I had my setup down there and it was, uh, you know, I fucking loved the crap out of Zelda like I've been over a billion times now. Mm hmm. And uh, it was this was uh, during kind of Christmas uh, because I believe that um, Zelda Majora's Mask came out around that time. So it was it was dark, you know, this being Norway, it's mm. really dark in, uh, in like the winter winter season. Um, and just sitting downstairs in the basement playing, you know, the oh, basically the only light was coming from the TV. <laughs> <laughs> am I setting? Am I, am I setting the stage here? Yeah, I think um, you are. And I remember, and probably a lot of you are going to remember this. The um, 
the fucking music box house, you know. Uh, <laughs> in Majora's is, Mask. In Majora's Mask, yeah. Um, and the music box, ho box house is kind of mysterious at first. Uh, you don't get to, to go in. Uh, you need to solve a puzzle to to get in, and there's this little girl there, mm. uh, just saying, "Go away!" You know, if you try to open the door, uh, you're not welcome here. And uh, but you, being a noisy little fucker, you know, Link just fucking can't take no for an answer. So he <laughs> prods and pokes and finds out how to stop the music box so he can go in. I'm not going to spoil how how to, how you're doing that, but. Um, <laughs> basically, you go in and there's nobody on the house. Um, and then you go downstairs and just out of fucking nowhere, this closet just opens up and inside there's a fucking zombie creature, redead something. And, you know, the fucking boss music just flares up and you piss your pants <laughs> Like I almost did. <laughs> I swear I almost, <laughs> almost did it. And, uh, you know, this zombie just kind of slowly starts approaching with this <laughs> a little bit goofy now in retrospect. But uh, back then it was really, really scary, you know, his movements and the shock value, the pure shock value. Uh, and also this, I think that this stuck with me because the kind of aftermath of this story is that this the zombie or the the guy is actually the uh the girl uh, or is the dad of a little girl who's mm. been protecting him, him ever since he got transformed into this creature that's the one who kept the door closed and you know said that you had to fucking fuck off <laughs> uh and this cute little girl she's protecting her dad and she's you know very distressed that this had happened but uh I guess the story is just so dark, you know, like everything else in Majora's Mask. And yeah. especially for a little kid like me, this just made such an impression. So, but, but that initial jump scare was fucking, I think that as a kid, I never got a jump scare. You know, I, I was never so scared from, from a jump scare uh, ever. As there wasn't that <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah that, that was okay, just, so. That was just yeah the the most insane jump scare. Even though the like the following section is very you know calm and not that scary, but just the first like three four seconds of it was like whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean you sent me the um, you sent me the clip just before we recorded, and I, I didn't really play Majora's Mask. I didn't have a Nintendo sixty four, so I just knew there was a lot of creepy shit in Majora's Mask. Um, oh, yeah. But when I saw it, I, I could totally understand where you're coming from because, like that, not, not only does the door slam open so abruptly, but there's the, the like you said, the boss music, and it's just like it all happens so fast. And this fucking polygonal, disgusting looking—he's he, weird, but in, he's also a little bit goofy. But then he's also very uncanny, right? Mm, and the yeah. mouth, how yeah. the mouth is designed and stuff. He looked pretty. He looked pretty disturbing, to be honest. And especially yeah, for kid, and I he had like a. Yeah, he has like one bloodshot eye that's yeah. visible, and like his mouth is kind of hanging, like he had a stroke, or you know, the, the <laughs> side of his head is kind of sewn on to the rest of it. So yeah, it looks kind of skewed. But I think that the the thing is that about that jump scare is that everything about the even the zone that you're in. Yeah, it's so creepy, and the prelude to all of this is the fucking music box ho box house that plays this creepy music, and it's just also the the setting is really really setting the stage for this. Yeah, and you do feel that all the time that that something creepy is about to happen, but you don't really really expect it either because you know it's a Zelda game. Yeah, <laughs> but then I mean, and the dark undertones in this game. Like this little girl living up in the mountains like this alone with her dad, just loving and caring for him, you know, even though he's in this fucking horrible state. Yeah. There's just something so kind of grown up about that and how it was presented. I just loved it as a kid. It made a real impression. Yeah, it, it gives it gives him more depth rather than just being a cheap jump scare. It actually adds to the whole package of it. I feel. Yeah, and you really do care. It really just in you you got the engagement, you know. Yeah. Developers. 
I uh, actually no. have a similar story. Uh, I'm not going to tell it now. It's for a different a different episode. But there, there's a similar kind of experience that I had with uh, another game that I played with uh, Bank M. So mm -hmm. um, I, I I'm going to be curious to see how you if you I think you'll see a lot of similarities in that story as well, uh, and it had a similar pretty powerful impact. So look forward to I'm that. Forward to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am. And that concludes this spooktober episode. And as always, remember to stay human. Stay back.